Okay, so um, another example, and this is uh, this this again is a practical example, and this has been this idea has been popular over the last few years that um, you can either build really clever algorithms, or you can get or you can build relatively simplistic algorithms and put lots and lots of data into them. And if you do the second one, it actually a lot of the time ends up beating the more clever algorithms. So simple, dumb algorithms with lots of data will give you better results than really clever algorithms with um, less data. Um, so the, the task, the example that I want to run through is, uh, is, is a question answering task. So um, anybody know what, anybody heard of the IBM Watson? Okay, yeah, right, that's more recent. Great. So um, Watson is effectively uh, a nice speechy UI pulled on top of a, an automated question answering system. Right. So what is a question answering system? In a question answering system, you're given a question, something like who created the character of Scrooge, and the system is supposed to say Charles Dickens automatically by analyzing some resource. Now the trick, of course, is you don't have a database where you have all of these questions answered. So you don't have a database where it says, so character value Scrooge, author value Charles Dickens. What you have is you have some unstructured resource where the information may be hidden in text. So perhaps Scrooge was introduced by Charles Dickens in the following, um, in the following story. Um, so your, um, your QA system, your question answering system, has to analyze this resource and figure out how to answer questions based on that. Now typically, and for many, many years, uh, these systems have been built based on lots of pretty heavy linguistic analysis. So uh, it's, 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 it's pretty heavy stuff. I, I, I won't even talk about it because I don't know most of it. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, but there's lots and lots of publications in track on the on the QA task. So uh, then something interesting happens. In, in 2002, Microsoft comes along and they say, well, uh, let's see how far we can get with fairly simple stuff. So we're not going to do heavy linguistics. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the question, who created the character of Scrooge? We're going to we're going to do some surface level chunking on it, right? Not even real parsing. We're going to figure out what is the subject, the verb, and the object, right? So who is the subject created as the verb, and, and, that, and that part is, is the object. And then we're going to take the question and rewrite it in a couple of simple patterns. So uh, a simple pattern for this would be created the character of Scrooge, and the character of Scrooge was created by. And really, all you're doing is you're just, you're just taking the verb part, you're taking the object part, and you're sort of moving them around in a couple of ways. And, and here you're taking the verb and you're enriching it with some linguistic glue that tends to occur in English. But this is basically really, really dumb, really, really simple rewriting. And then what did they do? Well, they said, okay, these are gonna be queries. This is query one and query two. We're gonna submit these exact queries to the web. Just run them on the Bing index. Right. And these, notice that this is not a set of words, this is, this is quoted, so this is the exact string. Right. So they're doing a search for this exact string in the web and then for that exact string in the web. And then what they do is they uh, get the results, uh, get the top 500 uh, snippets from the web, and then from them they extract phrases that occur either before Q1 or after Q2. Right? Just, just take a bigram or, or, or a unigram that occurs before this string or after that string. And of course, you do that on the web. You get lots and lots and lots of results, uh, but then you can start counting. You can start counting how many times did I see a particular phrase before this string or after this string. And if you do that, you get something like that. Right? So uh, Dickens occurs 117 times, Charles Dickens 50, 75 times, Disney 72 times, and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, and then what they did, of course, is they picked the most frequent, uh, the, mo the most frequent phrase, and returned that as the as the answer, right? So that is their answer to the QEA uh, task. <clears throat> so you you might look at this approach and you say, well, this is very dumb, right? This is very very simplistic. You are ignoring lots and lots of ways in which the answer could have been expressed, right? So you wouldn't get that because you're looking for this exact string created the character of Scrooge. So you're really, really killing your recall. And guess what? On the web, it doesn't matter. 
because the web is huge. And even if you kill your recall, as long as you get enough matches, you're fine. And on the web, you will, because the web is huge. So again, if you have a big index, if you have lots of data, you're guaranteed to get exact matches for strings. So you can build really, really stupid systems. And uh, I get, guess who won track that year? So they actually did really, really well. So they, they, they were the winning uh, system. Now, this is just the surface of it. They did, they did some clever cleanup on top of that. But the main idea is if you have lots and lots of data, you can allow yourself to do simple rewriting. And that simple rewriting is going to get better results than some really, really clever uh, linguistic analysis. So that's a big lesson for all of us.